Yeah. Welcome yeah. to the Ponytail Radio Hour. I'm your Thanks. new host, Phil Matteries. This is my co-host, Ponytail. Larry? The Ponytail. It's, it's Ponytail. Um, Ponytail. Well, Thanks for um, taking over my show, Phil. Um, I think I've heard you do that often, um, but it is a pleasure to have you on the Ponytail Show right now um, because you've got like a pretty crowded little brain in there, like just mm. just saying it, like you have quite a few things going on in the old noggin and I just want to share that with my ponytail people. So, um, okay. yeah, just going to tell people out there that you, Phil Matteris, um, mm -hmm. you made this show called Animals with your mm -hmm. friend Mike. And mm -hmm. you also have, so, so, so Animals is on HBO now. And you also have, you also have a book that you released this year called Horn If You're Honky. Um, That's right. Which is really a really rad book, all full of bumper stickers, and it's in a bunch of places. Like printed matter, I think they sold out already, but that's one of my favorite Probably. bookshops in New York. Also, you have okay. Also, you have a comedy act called Lil Phil, yes. where you play, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> where you have a giant paper mache head, and you play Lil Phil. Um, uh -huh. You also have a band called Phil's Pills. Uh huh. Just putting it Starting out there. Starting to see a theme in in this. A lot of <laughs> Phil centric stuff. <laughs> and you also have a web series with Mike called Keebler, which I need to uh -huh. ask you about in a sec because I have no idea what that is about. I've I've watched it, but okay. you just have to. Do that. Seems pretty straightforward, but all right. But, yeah, but I'm old. Okay, so um, and also you have very pro prolific. YouTube series called Somebody Feed Phil. <laughs> These are all deep in, in the way you listed them is the most important to, <laughs> I mean, the least important to the most important. The most, yeah. the, I care the most about snacks yes. and my web series that I, now that I'm realizing, yeah, it's still up. People have seen it is uh, the thing it's I prolific. care about absolutely the most. It's very where I've prolific. Just drunk and eaten. Yeah. Um, various chips. Yeah, I've watched all every single episode, all four of them, and um, wow. And yeah, so Did I just get Brighton. Yeah, I just got Brighton here. Um, thank you for just looking shit up while we're having a podcast right now. Sorry, I was just trying to EQ our my look. I want to make sure I don't look sickly. I felt like I looked sickly before, but now I look worse. <laughs> so. Um, Let's just when you go. interview people, are you looking at the person or are you looking at yourself I'm looking most at of the, the time? I'm looking at the person. My, Do you, I'm like are you a even in a window? Per, I'm a little tiny window up the top. I don't actually know how to switch it, which is probably a good thing. Are you looking at yourself right now? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you see the whites of my eyes, just snap twice and I'll focus up. Yeah, I'm here. Can. I'm listening. I actually thought you were leading this off with a. It sounded like an insult. Like Phil's got <laughs> shit in his brain. Phil's got <laughs> shit in his brain. All right, listen to this. This guy on this show has a lot of crap up there. <laughs> and then you listed it all out, and it was like a bad flea market, just a <laughs> shitty table, <laughs> just like he had a show on HBO three years ago. He's got this fucking web series where he's eating chips that he named it after another guy Phil's TV show. Yeah, it's what I do. I'm sort of a renaissance man of things. Of Phil. Of Phil. Phil things, yeah. <laughs> That's the extended uh, Phil universe, I guess, is all that so, stuff. So so I'm going to drive – I'm going to go back to driving here and I'm going okay. to guide this podcast. Um, so – so basically the whole podcast I want to be about what makes Phil Phil, basically. Mm, I love that. Yeah. So, but first I probably will start with the least significant thing you've, you've done in that list of things that I just listed out um, because it's pretty timely right now. I'm going to talk about animals. I want to talk about animals because you kind of predicted the zombie apocalypse, I know, Which weird, is, right? 
Yeah, which is pretty crazy. So I just need to give a bit of context to people who are listening about animals. I watched season one and two very recently. We can't get season three here in Thailand, unfortunately. Yeah, just be, what is just that? a little hint to the powers out there. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But anyway, I thought animals was the sweetest, messed up, funniest, like most character driven s- stories about animals, about people, about relationships, about mm. being a worm and having an asshole brother friend thing. Who is also your asshole, technically. Who is also your asshole. Um, I also loved, like, all the features. (laughs) I could could just see you dying a little bit saying that. Yeah, Yeah. Phil, he's also his asshole. Yeah, it's also his asshole. Anyway, thanks, (laughs) Phil. Um, And also I loved that Bill Callahan was Mm. narrating on the The show. The best. The best. And I also loved um, my – I don't know why this was – it's like – I don't know why this is a thing for me, but I love Duncan Trussell as a stoned moth watching a neon oh, yeah. sign. That was pretty spiritual. Um, but, yeah, so basically I want to ask you, are the animals of New York immune to COVID-19? In real life or in my show? In real life, since you've already, like, predicted most things anyway, you know. I think um, yes, definitely. Yeah. I think they're more. Res- they've been there before we've been there, and they'll be there after we've been there. Because there was and like a thing. There was a thing that like people were getting scared that their pets were getting COVID, the COVID, right, and right. going to pass it on to them. Is that a conspiracy theory? Yeah, I don't think so because I can't get dog. Lyme's disease, <laughs> like a dog version of Lyme's disease. <laughs> Can you I can't get a tick disease that a dog gets onto me, the human version of it. Is you know that what I mean? mean? Do you know? So you obviously know science then. Yeah. Yeah. And animals is scientifically accurate. Yeah. Every creature, every mannerism in which they speak, their general interactions, it was all based in science. Based on Behavioral science. science hard yeah. science and yeah they, they've been they were in my show it was um virus x very strange and it's interesting you brought that up this is the first time i've ever been like personally brought up to with that whole thread because people tag me on twitter and stuff about it and it's kind of tough to talk about because you don't want to call these things <laughs> you do, i don't want to be like yeah my show fucking watch season two of animals man this shit we're in right now it's insane how much i called it so um yeah there's but it is very strange parallels that happen in that season and in our reality right now but i think the animals would have made it through it especially the roaches yeah you're speaking in yeah you're speaking speaking really like about now in reality because you know science Um, yes exactly yeah so so then like i want to know um since you are such an expert on the zombie apocalypse because that's Mm -hmm. why i had you on my shows because you are like an expert opinion on on all these things that you do um do you have any zombie apocalypse style tips i have um my plan for the zombie apocalypse that I am willing to share with everybody if they Please want to do. follow. Yeah. Um, it's very simple. Early, 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 when you realize it's about to really all start to hit. So, you know, it seems like we're not going to win. There's no cure for this thing. There's zombies coming around. My plan is to get into my car, right? So, I live in Los Angeles, probably will be an epicenter of it, even though we're pretty big. But I feel like it'll be, you know, New York and Los Angeles. will be. Yeah, it it, kind of is right now. Oh, yeah, it is the epicenter for sure. But okay, so proper zombie apocalypse when that happens, if and when that happens, actual zombies. um, My plan is to get in my car 
and I'm going to drive it out to a big old zombie situation, right? A bunch of zombies everywhere. And I'm going to roll my window down this much. And for, I'm gonna for folks stick, listening, that's like two in, one inch, one oh, inch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Say Probably about like an inch or two. And I'm going to stick my little pinky out and I'm going to let a zombie bite it. Ha! I'll lose the tip of the pinky. I don't really care. Maybe the ring finger or some. Actually, not this hand so I could play the guitar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> then, so then I'm going to let him bite the tip of my ring finger and I'll uh, be an early adopter zombie and they won't go all the way. They'll get their blood. They'll get their um, flesh taste of my little finger and I'll just turn into a zombie simply and ahead of the curve. So I'll end up being a sort of king zombie. King zombie. Get, into the, get in zombie early. Yeah, right. Fashion wise, that's like get it like – Zombie is like supreme 2004. Zombie is like Bape 1999. Get in zombie now. Stick your little pinky out and then they'll get it. They'll realize they can't get you and then you'll be able to <laughs> change into the zombie <laughs> safely and soundly with your brains intact. So keep in mind, I'm going to be the smartest zombie there is because yeah. all I lost is this. Little pinky. Well, you know, like, but as as someone in fashion, um, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we, as the early, as the 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 taste makers and the people who are doing things early, sometimes we can do things a little too early. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So so I can get my little ring finger bit off, and then there's a cure. Yeah, but I've irreparably <laughs> damaged my brain. <laughs> You might so be I, like <laughs> I'm a weird in between, a, weird, a strange half breed. That's okay. I would feel that way anyway. I'm between these two worlds of being a man and a boy and a boy. Being a man and a boy. How's that going for you, Phil? It's going pretty good. Can we address the elephant in the room that I have a little bit of makeup on? And it's yeah, I because I was say. doing something earlier. I was on a shoot earlier that needed makeup. Tell me about so the sheet. Well, are you allowed to tell me about the sheet? Eh, I don't want to. It's Good. not worth it. <laughs> okay. okay. Thanks for bringing it up, but then not going ahead with the whole situation. Well, I figured let's just bring it back to me. Yeah. I don't want to talk about this other thing I was yep. on that I didn't write or anything like that. We'll talk about the old, good old Philly boy. All right. Fine. Fine, Phil. I have a well, question for you. Can I toss one in now? Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. It's just So all the things we listed, I make little cards. I make little books, I make little bands, all the senses basically, but yes. it's not the sense of touch. And the thing that you do includes the sense of touch. And in fact, it's kind of the most sense. So when you're making stuff, how do you factor in how, it how it's going to feel on someone's body? You know what I mean? Because I was yeah. thinking about that of like, you like draw just drawing a jacket um, is still kind of fifty percent away from what it's yeah. what your end product is. For me, that's yeah. like done. It's like I color it and then wow. it's on the in the cartoon. Yeah, it takes that's a my, lot. Of, that's my question. Takes a lot of time, Phil. Takes a lot of like experience, and like I've only been making clothes for like five years. So like I'm like I, I'm a babe in the woods. If you talk mm. about. Like, you know, people, one of my best friends who I told you about, Nigel Cable, and he's been doing this for like 50 years, all right? Um, but like, yeah, I guess he, Nigel actually told, taught me a lot about fabrics. So it's all about fabrics, right? You can't mm. make beautiful clothes unless you have beautiful raw materials, which is your fabrics. And so, yeah, basically you have to, you have to, get real handsy with a lot of fabrics just right. do a lot of feeling and so um, get little swatches of them no you get like pretty decent swatches yeah probably like 10 centimeters by oh, inches sorry five inches by five inches um swatches and it also takes a lot of experience like just a lot of failure and like mm. making stuff making stuff and trying it on and being like, that was a terrible idea. Just Do you being, still have those things? Do you have the oh, worst thing you've ever I made? Have, I have so many things, Phil. Like I, 
I have a storage problem. That's the thing about having a clothing business is you end up having huge storage problems because mm. there's just so much stuff and there's so much failure. I'm just swimming in failure all the time, basically, <laughs> which is which is the key to success is a lot of failure. True. Very true. There's like failures actually. I feel like failure is a theme in your work too. I'm just flipping. Oh, back thank you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> No, seriously though, like 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 in animals, like the there's the themes are like heavily based on failure, which is quite sweet and beautiful at the same time. You know. I think right. that's like one thing that people people need to like be reassured about is that like we all failing all the time. Oh well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely um yeah, now that I look back on it, it is a lot of like reconciling with not being a good enough friend because it's always a two-hander episode. It's Phil and Mike go on an adventure, they break up, and then they become friends again or, you know, completely not that sometimes. But, um, yeah, I, I, a lot of the things that I'm taking out now and – is, is kind of this idea of like work in progress. Like we're always a work in progress. I got this one thing where it's a generational thing and everyone's kind of a fuck up in it. And then um, some other stuff that I also can't talk about that I <laughs> keep bringing up. Uh, but yeah, I really like focusing on that and like the relief of seeing even when i talk to you sometimes we're like i don't fucking know what i'm doing sorry sorry to air out your dirty laundry <laughs> but uh the I, that's like oh cool like we can all relax like nobody's yeah. perfect and nobody's um yeah got it all figured out there's this really good quote from a guy who's like something about jesus <laughs> and he, and for, by adya shanti i was at the beginning of uh, quarantine i really went into the whole of all this sort of stuff and yeah, I saw a Ramdas clip on your feed just right about like quarantine time. Yeah. <laughs> Getting I feel spiritual. like everybody kind of, kind of had one at that same time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was about Jesus. He was like, okay, guess what? I'm Jesus. Can we move on? <laughs> like, just a total <laughs> relaxed version of that guy, even is uh, it's nice. And yeah. I think people like to see, I like to talk about it. Yeah. They made like people made. God's way too perfect. The Greeks yeah. didn't. The Greeks didn't, by the way. But but the rest of the folk out there, they all the rest of the cultures, they kind of made God too too amazing. Like, do you think we should have made Jesus a little chubby? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Like, Maybe Jesus he was. on the cross. It's like he's hanging over the cloth a little bit. It's like not. A little bit it's of not muffin. like listen. He's not bad, but for muffin. the time for the time period. Yeah, little muffin. Yeah, he was sharing too much. She, he wasn't sharing enough bread, if you get yeah. what I mean. I mean, he could change all water into wine. Like he's gonna be kind of boo- he's gonna have a booze belly a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Jesus on the mountaintop, sitting with the muffin top. <laughs> I'm so glad. That's just a little player. Yeah, I'm so glad. Most of my listeners are probably gonna be offended by that, or maybe not. But that's their choice. Um, that's their choice. Yeah, that's the beauty of life and the internet. You should put um, a parental advisory sticker at the front of this episode. <laughs> Welcome to this this episode of Ponytail Journals for bad boys only. Beep, beep. You got to buckle up. There's no seatbelts in this car where we're going. <laughs> Don't forget the girls too. You need to be politically correct. Yeah, bad boys sure. and girls. Sure. Um, so basically now it's, so I want to now segue into a little package that you received Mm. full of snacks. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. I forgot. (laughs) Should I go grab them? Yeah. Can you fill about 20 seconds while I, now it's time for somebody feed Phil. Do I, I don't know. I don't think you have a theme song for somebody feed Phil, but I'm just going to narrate in a sweet voice until you get back to bring everybody into the world of somebody feed Phil 
Welcome back, Phil, and welcome back welcome. to the segment of Somebody Feeds Phil, starring Thai Snacks, Three Kinds. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> I forgot about this. <laughs> Don't be. Okay, so number one. Are you going to, so now oh, you yeah, have, sorry. okay, now you need to do a product. Now do the Maybe. influencer thing with the hand in the back. Yeah. Big grab, late. I'm doing this for you. No, you have to do it for me. Got it. Are you going to eat it too? I don't have, do you I have them? Have, I don't have them. I'm sorry. Okay, so that, I'll, uh, have welcome, to, I'll have to make uh, an, a guest episode. <laughs> okay, so this is, um. What what flavor is this? This is Mian Kam flavor. It's Lay's brand, chips, commercial brand of chip in Thailand. Opened a couple of days ago, perhaps. Yeah. Phil probably are- needs to eat a few chips in order to do his full review properly. On the I'll keep it at three because I don't want people to hear me. I'm chewing. sure that chewing is making people um, pound their steering wheels. So for folks who are listening, Phil is chewing three chips, holding up the bag of Lay's Mian Kum chips. It says Big Grab on the top. These are, oh, it does. These are like a refreshing chip. It almost feels like it could be a chip between chips. Like a little bit of uh, ginger with your sushi, but you could, I could uh, reach back to this chip. It's incredibly limey and light and delicious. Mm. Limey ah. and light and delicious. So um, I believe you have some some industry standards of chip ratery on your on somebody feed fill, including mouthfeel, consistency, crunch factor, and taste. Okay, How Crunch Factor rate? has definitely gotten goosed up in the last few days. So this guy's playing with a corked <laughs> bat. But uh, I'll say Crunch Factor is up there. How do I do it? Is it four chips or five chips? <laughs> I think it's five. <laughs> Again, this is my most important project. <laughs> this is my chip YouTube channel, and I'm glad we're focused on it. I'd say Crunchability. Uh, four and a half chips. What was the other one? Mouthfeel. Really nice mouthfeel. Although I'm not a Lay's boy, I'm more of a Doritos man. Um, I'll give it to these really nice big chips. Yes. Fills up the whole mouth. They are huge chips. I'll give give five chips on the mouthfeel on that one. And taste, I'll give it a 3.6. 3.6. Chips. Not bad. How do they go for okay. consistency? Okay, so we're moving on. We've got the next packet. So these these chips are basically what I grew up with. They, you know, they, every kid has to put them on their fingers. They're these like they're these corn chips, but they're like in the shape of little cones, and you have to put them on your fingers, and then you have to pretend that you're a Thai dancer or a spooky oh. person. Yeah, or or a spooky person. It could be a bit Halloween themed if you want it to be. And take it away from here. Phil. Sounds good. Thank you, Lauren. I will choose to be a spooky person. Not too <laughs> sure what a Thai dancer looks like. Also, not too sure if I'm allowed to. <laughs> they got maybe my thingies got bigger or these got smaller. <laughs> I like that it's called a uh, it's called an American corn snack. Yes. I'll be the judge of that. Okay, I get. I can I get one half down to my pinky. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a somebody Sorry. feed Phil first ever, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. It fell to the floor. I missed my mouth. It's late here in America. <laughs> Slow clap. <laughs> so Phil's just testing three to four chips currently. His his face got a bit scrunched up. He's focused. He's looking at the chip bag. Now he's leaning back in his chair and looking up into the sky like he's scared of something behind him. I haven't eaten these chips for since probably since I was like 10 years old. 
but I remember them being my favorite because they were a little bit sweet and uh, they tasted American to me. That's what I thought America tasted like. I'm going to tell you something. America ain't that bland, baby. America's got kick to it. America's, Amer- America's got punch. America's got punched. America's not like this. America's got a punch to it. It's not like this. Come on. Man. It is. Um, we had something like this. I think they were called bugles in America. And it is interesting the slight deviations of just like, I don't know, the ending of eating eating the chip feels different than what I remember bugles ending of eating the chip feels like. Mm. Like maybe it's just a little bit more constructed um, overseas than, than here in America. It's good. It's wow. like more of a, yeah, it, it, it really is. It, it, I, was, I probably have six or seven of these because it's one of those chips that's a real build upon itself kind of chip. So mouthfeel, um, I'm going to give it about uh, a two. It's kind of gross. <laughs> it's like a weird, it's sort of like a weird mush, but taste. Uh, t- <laughs> okay, so taste, I'm going to give it, what's my numbers, Lauren? Is it I five or is five. it four? What's the it's top? Four. Okay, it's five's five. the top. I'm going to give it a 4.5 oh for the goodness. taste. And then That's what was high. the other one? Um, crunch factor. Crunch factor is, um, man, it's interesting because there's a lot of them and it's different. So it's different from a chip. So there is like, you're getting more surface area to crunch, mm. but at the same time, I like, a, I like a chips crunch better. Mm. I'll give it a three. Mm. Okay. I'll give it a three. Solid three. All right. Let's, we got to rip the Band-Aid off. Okay, this is the final packet. And Everybody. here's why I'm nervous, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> She's, this is a Thai chip that ha- says devil on it and has – it's mostly flames. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to read it? Uh, uh. Um, Tasto devil. Oh, great. Chili flavor. Um, so I didn't know that you didn't eat super hot food before when I bought these chips. So just I've never tried these chips either, but I'm hoping that you'll be okay. Maybe a small Looking like sample. A, sort of a Lay's kind of waffle <laughs> situation. I got, I, that was <laughs> oh a call God. from the air around the chips. I swear to God. Just a tiny little baby cough. There's a slight, how do I say it? Pepper spray ambiance around these chips. I'm so sorry, Phil. I got my my bugles to bring it down. I got a cup of cold water. I got a water bottle. Okay. So Phil just put one chip in his mouth. He's going for two now. He's going for two. His face is still very deadpan. He's thinking about it. The chili hasn't hit him yet. These are quite delicious. This face looks like he's really enjoying it. Actually, seems like it's not too bad. I just got so sweaty. (laughs) I think the fear of it. (laughs) You know when you're sitting and your body's just like... (laughs) It's like like when you go to the doctors and you're just you're you're going in for shots at the doctor and mm. you're just dreading it. But really, it's not too bad. It's just a little prick. Right. But it's all it's all I've in the mind. Nurse, I've had a nurse like pat me. I did. This was like two years ago. She like pat me because it was like this. She's like, it's all done now. I was like, ah, <laughs> you did the baby thing to me. You treated me like I was a baby. Getting hot. I. It's getting really hot, but it's terrible now. It's really bad now. You ate this many. This might be the hottest. I think you ate many. I was expecting you to just eat, just try one because usually that's the thing about spicy food is the more you have, the more spicy it gets. Um, right. Little tip, 
little ponytail tip for folks out there who <laughs> are interested in eating spicy food. It's a, it's a like it grows on you. That's <sighs> spicy. I will say it's very good. It's oh, a wow. very good chip. It's so peppery, so much like Szechuan, like a like a like a just like a big immediate flavor, which is really fun to have on a chip. And it's a really good kind of waffle Solid. crunchy chip. I'm yeah. sure you can't really see it, but it's, like very, it's very solid. And there's not – you'd imagine <laughs> – <laughs> I'm sorry. Phil's just dying here. You'd um, imagine something with that much flavor being like super dusted. I think that's a thing in America. We don't – we just like dust it with stuff. It's it, like our spicy Doritos are fucking – they look like they're from Mars with just the amount <laughs> of powder yeah. and shit put on them. But this is a this is a very good looking chip. It's when Need I some water. when I start talking a little bit, it all starts to creep back up the old esophagus. <sighs> <laughs> oh, she, he's run out of water too. I got an extra reservoir. Welcome back to Jackass. Welcome. Thank you for participating in the ponytail somebody feed fill rendition. Featuring spicy Thai chips. Those were good, though. If you could handle a little heat, go to Thailand, find a fucking bag of chips that's got a ton of flames on it and says devil <laughs> and dig in. Maybe you'll yeah. fare better than I did. We eat those for breakfast. No, literally. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Literally. Like uh, on our last um, photo shoot, um, one of our models, Moshi, she's like, um, she ate. She ate devil chips for breakfast. Well, just casually for breakfast. It's just that's that's an acceptable breakfast food here. Is are they potato pop, chips. They're popular. Yeah, they're everywhere. These devil chips are everywhere. Wow. Yeah. Have you ever had some kind of a similar flavor? Um, Andy Caps hot fries. They're like. Basically, they look like French fries, but they're crunchy, and they come in a ba uh, blue bag. Mm, they sound good. They sound they're American. Good. Yeah, very American. I used to get them. I, when I lived in New York, I'd go to the bodega every day, and I'd get Andy Capps hot fries, and I'd eat them on my walk home. Nice. So you lived in New York for, for a bit. How long yes. was that? Um, I commuted for a while. Um. Three years? Two years? Let's talk about New Something Jersey. Like oh, man, of New course. Jersey. Yeah, because that's where you're from. Yep. Because this whole episode is what makes Phil Phil. And right. I think a big part of what makes Phil Phil is New Jersey. Um, yeah, okay. Tell, tell us out there, all the listeners out there who've never been to New Jersey, like myself, what is New Jersey like? New Jersey is defined by its ineffability. It's unable to be defined. It's the most densely populated state in America. But at the same time, it's got rural parts. It's got country parts. It's got a whole Pine Barrens that's like spooky, scary woods. There's this whole paranormal like lore that we grew up with of like the Jersey devil, but also there's these huge um, books called weird New Jersey and weird New Jersey magazine. That's like, we grew up, it's on every newsstand in New Jersey, which is a very strange thing. Nice. Um, so it's got all those things, but it's also got Newark and Trenton and is 15 minutes, you know, out of New York city and 15 minutes out of Philadelphia, depending on where you live, obviously. Um, and it's it's all these great things in one, and there's beautiful beaches, and there's beautiful, cool, hip towns, and there's um, all my family lives there, all my friends live there. It's uh, got a vague. I guess there's I guess the New Jersey accent is like dog, coffee, all that sort of stuff, but it's it it's not 
like Philadelphia has the worst sounding voices in the world. They Are you know sure that. about that? Really? I'm pretty sure. Um, There's some competition out there. Well, I can't. You, it's of the. I'll say the tri-state area, and I okay. think they know it. Um, and then New York is just they. They've they're the full pendulum swing of the New Jersey accent, which is the perfect soup. You know, we're the Goldilocks perfect soup of anywhere to live in the Northeast. We get the Four Seasons. Um, we get. It's just beautiful, and it's beautiful, and that's the main thing too. Sorry, uh, <laughs> one more thing. Everyone has something to say about it. It's so weird because a lot of people haven't been there, but a lot of people in America just talk shit about it or they hate it for some reason because of the Jersey Shore TV show or because they've been to Newark airport briefly. So it's this weird immediate divisive thing where, um, yeah, you know, whenever something, someone knocks something you love, you just kind of triple down on it and go, no, 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 no. Sorry, buddy. You're incorrect. If New Jersey was like a pizza, what what flavored pizza would it be? First of all, it'd be a good pizza. They got the best pizza over there, and I think it would just be um, sausage pet, <laughs> thin crust, thick crust. Kind of the medium. Medium crust. You know, it seems like thin crust is very popular at most of the places now, but just the, the, the most traditional pizza is still kind of the most popular there. Definitely not thick, but um, kind of a medium crust. Good. Very good. Sounds <laughs> delicious. Yeah. Um, so now it's the part of the, ep- the podcast where we talk about some philosophical shit about philosophical philosophical stuff about life and your worldview okay great um, I'll do that. <laughs> so, um so first question is probably what is art to you phil what what is the function of art and what the hell is it huh interesting hmm. um Wow, that's big. I think, you know, every person is something of unspeakable value and significance. So how beautiful is it to all tell our own little stories, even if they're similar? to just let your little POV rip, even if you were my neighbor and we went to the same school and stuff. um, I always want to hear your point of view on anything. And I think art is kind of one of the best ways to do that, whether or not you've um, knowingly put yourself in it or knowingly are trying to get your point of view across, even with animals, like where it's like, yeah, I've said a lot of stuff I've always wanted to say about, to my friends through that show about how much I love them and how difficult male intimacy is and how I think breaking a lot of that sort of shit down is um, the happiest I've been is having friends and going, I love you. I married one of my friends like two years ago uh, for his birthday. Tell he was me like, about that. I just, ah, he just wanted to get married. It was his uh, 30th birthday and he was like, we should get married. And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever, we'll get married. And then I go, um, yeah. And we, the whole theme of that was don't overthink it. (laughs) We're just getting married. Don't overthink it. But it was so beautiful and everyone there. Yeah. Marry your best friend. If you have a best friend in the world, tell them you're, they're your best friend in the world. If you have multiple best friends, tell all of them they're your best friends. I uh, lost the thread of the original. So what is art? Tell your best friends they're your best friends. <laughs> that's so I am a, beautiful. I have a baby brain. <laughs> that's, that's like, but that's art too. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, that's to me, like what art is, is just keeping it real simple and just being like, mm-hmm. I'm going to yes. notice, I'm going to notice the little things that really are important in life because we don't have all that long on this planet and it's 
more important to make note of those things than to yeah. just pass them by. For sure. Yeah. That's a good way to put it too. I like the idea of I try to speak very plainly. Like I don't like to write with a lot of finesse. I try to write as I talk, which is um, that's like just, an eighth that's, grade level. That's fine. It's like that's – I feel the same way. Like I mean that's just truthful, right? It's just being right. honest with yourself and being like, look, my brain ain't that sharp. But I like stuff and people. <laughs> here's, here's the people I like. Here's the stuff I like. Here's our stuff. What <laughs> I else love you all. I yeah. love you all. Good night. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. Honestly, but that's like some real deep shit, man. That's oh, hell yeah, beautiful man. Stuff. All right. I found my way through it. Yeah. I traveled down the river. You, you swam. You floated. You backstroked. Yeah. I was a salmon jumping into yeah. the jumping into the arms of a bear. Yes. If you were a spirit animal, if you had a spirit animal, what would that be? Probably I wanna say a squirrel. Hmm. And I wanna say a squirrel because they're flashy but they keep to themselves. They've got their own little echelon going on. They keep their, they focus their eyes on their own plate. That's always another one of my main ethos in, I don't know, making stuff is I, I got to get my nuts and I care about my nuts. I don't care how many nuts you have. I don't care what your nuts look like. These are my nuts right now. And I care about these nuts. And I'm going to have the best nuts possible. And they're kind of insane, but also, like the most kind of familiar animal to me, I guess there's a lot of squirrels in mm. New Jersey, but it's like, if you just think of your visual landscape, it's like, yeah, my parents, thousands of dogs that they have were cats and then kind of squirrels. They're like always there mm. and they're always like kind of in the periphery. They're always and they're watching. Like, yeah. Oh, there's Is a there really a great, um, I'll send you a it, from Rick and Morty. Is that what yes. you're going to say? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Excuse yeah. me, little boy. Yeah. That, me and my friend. So. People listening, there's a freaking awesome Rick and Morty episode of like where, um, was it, um, they can understand what, what, no, he can understand what um, the squirrels are saying and the squirrels are like plotting to take over the world or something. It gets yeah. real awkward. And he, yeah, that's a good episode. For th- yeah, Rick yeah, and Morty jump is dimensions a, again. Rick, Rick and Morty is like one of my top favorite cartoons, basically. Also, it's fair. Uh, I it, rewatch all of the episodes like multiple times. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. I re- I remember when um, we first the studio we made animals with. They made Rick and Morty, so it was Rick and Morty, you know, on one side of the hall, and we were on the other side of the hall. And it was kind of like when Animals was first coming out, we all got a bus together to Comic-Con. And I was like, fuck, yeah, we're like, this is going to be sick. We're like Rick, with Rick and Morty people and stuff. And just like the sheer bombardment of how big that show mm. was and how little our show was just made me feel real bad all weekend. But it was uh, great. It was great. But it it's is like the best show. You can't compare. Yes. You you can't even compare them at all. Thank you. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. Yes. No. Good point. Keep your eyes on your own nuts. Yeah. <laughs> Keep your eyes on your own nuts. And failure is not real because we all do mm. it all the time. Mm. That's a good point. Yeah. And also everything that I've had as a failure or like didn't go or whatever, get picked up as a TV show. Looking back now, once like a month passes, you go like, yeah, I'm kind of glad. I'm a little glad. <laughs> Thank you. Like, I don't know. I, <laughs> truly the amount of times that something hasn't gone through and I've gone, Oh, thank God. Thank fucking God. Yeah. I, I have the same thing with clothes. Like there'll be like clothes that like, you know, I take to like the showrooms and like, 
the, the public haven't seen them yet, but the buyers have. And like nobody in the whole season like chose that piece. And then you're like, ah, I'm kind of glad it's pretty shit. It was like, <laughs> it was, it was like when you think that it's a good idea, but it's really not a good idea when mm, right. it happens. Yeah. But what do you mean? That, so the buyers saw it. So, but who's not buying it? So the the way that the fashion calendar works is that okay, you make your you design your collections and you make a bunch of samples, and then you go mm. on the road and you go to like a bunch of different cities like Tokyo and Paris and New York. That's when you see all the fashion weeks and all the mm, right. showrooms. Then you show your stuff and the buyers come and the buyers are like buyers for stores and department stores or right or mom and pop shops, and they come and make their orders. And then um, then once I take all the orders, I gather all my nuts, mm-hmm. keep them for myself, and then I take the nuts to the factory and we make the clothes, and then they get shipped to the stores like six months later. So Fun. Yeah. So that's that when they get shipped to the stores, that's when the public see the clothes. Uh. Yeah. So it's like very confusing because like you design things like at least a year before it comes out in the public right. eye. Yeah. How do you know what people are going to wear in 2021? Well, like that's so I don't care. Skateboarders, their pants get big, their pants get small, the pants get the shorts are big, small, the shorts are big. Bicyclists, yeah. the the handlebars are wide, the handlebars are real small, the handlebars are real wide again. Yeah, I don't care. I just do what I think is cool. But there's like indus- okay. there's a whole industry called trend forecasting that like try to predict these things. But basically, no offense to any trend forecasters out there, um, but they're basically Pinterest, like big mood board people. They just like take ideas from all over the internet and they just put it in a mood board and then they charge a lot of money. Like the big, big mm. businesses charge a lot of money for like – Companies like Zara, H and M, and stuff to like sell their mood boards and tell tell brands what people are going to wear in a year. But yeah, Funny. that's how it works. And usually, yeah, like you don't even realize when these companies have like taken your pictures and like your drawings and stuff, and like have put them in their mood boards because it's all behind the scenes. Oh, so they don't even have to pay you or or attribute you or anything like that. Yeah. Have you seen any of these and you've been in it? Yeah, yeah. There's like a friend of mine. There's been so many cases where friends of mine have worked for different brands. Like one of them was like Nike. He was like in Portland in like a meeting and he like sent me a photo of their meeting, like a screen grab of what they were showing on on their, in their meeting. It was like all my photos, like, Yeah. Gnarly man. Whoa. This, that's how that's how ruthless the world is. But just, Wild. that's yeah, but that's I mean, it means people are keeping an eye right. out. I guess. Yeah, they're keyed into it a little bit. It's not very fair, but the world isn't a fair place, Phil. You know. No, and plus if if it's the if it's images that you've already put out, then they're behind you already and you're yeah. also onto your next thing too. Exactly. So that's why I don't care what people, what I think people are gonna wear in a year, because I'm just gonna tell them. <laughs> <laughs> You're just gonna wear what I'm, what I'm gonna make. Yeah. Sorry, boo. Sorry, dude. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, boo. What, are, what, ne- what is your necklace? Is that a big silver this my, thing? This is. This was my grandmother's. It's a silver chain. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It goes with the Harley really nice. shirt. Yeah, it goes with my Harley theme today. Yeah, this Harley I'm T-shirt. I'm wearing an election T-shirt for Insane Clown Posse. Nice. Insane Clos- Clown Posse for president, 2004. <laughs> What's your shirt say? Harley Davidson? It says on the back, it says Las, uh, Las Vegas. Wow, cool. Because Did you get that, that in was, Las Vegas? Yeah, that was I was there two years ago for my sister's world championship pole dancing competition at the Hard Rock Hotel. And 
Sorry, my battery's going out. And then um, I just felt like I feel like I always need a souvenir T-shirt wherever I go. It's very appropriate. Nice. So, go I got a T-shirt from Roswell, New, New Mexico. There were some really good ones. Oh, I bet. Oh, okay. So that segue, this segue, I'm very professional with my podcast right now. This is a segue into <laughs> Phil's 2014 spray paint tees. What is this? Oh, I put it, I recently so, put that up in my link tree. Okay, um, dokey. So Phil, Phil, in 2014, Phil obviously made a bunch of really beautiful spray paint tees, by the way. Um Thanks. With, with things written on them, such as, I welcome death's embrace. I'm so tired, I want to die. Kill me, please. I'm begging you. I'm sick, said Minnie Mouse. That was a Minnie Mouse one. Genocide. Live, loves, die. Oh, sorry, I fucked that up. Lives, loves, die. Ugh, I fucked it up again. Lives, loves, laughs, dies. And my favorite, which is a, a picture of Scooby-Doo, there is no God. Tell me about these T-shirts, Phil. I didn't know you were a closet design T-shirt designer. Oh, I guess I am. And there's some sort of pun in there too. And I feel like I, a lot of those need... A little, they just need the visual. I mean, the please kill me, I'm begging you is a horse who's like neighing. It's just really funny and beautiful. They are. <laughs> they, all, they all really came out beautiful. But it's kind of the same thing as um, Horn If You're Honky, where I really like, I think the medium of, there it is. I'm holding up okay. the Horn If You're Honky book that just came out this year. Um, by the way, just, just putting it out there, um, Phil did not pay me to plug all of his stuff. Yeah, I paid, I paid you for the, um, chip channel because that was not getting enough traction and I will, Um, I will clip out, (laughs) I will clip out our brief train wreck that we've already recorded this evening (laughs) and add it to the train wreck. That is my life. So um, let's jump to the book, I guess. Let's do that. Yeah. So um, this book is full of bumper stickers. Um, It is dedicated to disgusting people. (laughs) And (laughs) it's just full of really not PG rated bumper stickers um, that I feel like you, did you like, create all of these bumper stickers based on vintage ones? Yes. It's an ones. amalgam of, um, yeah, finding vintage one and, and then getting like cert level scalpel of <laughs> uh, just really getting in there with Photoshop, removing the original one and putting in a totally new one or totally creating a new one using vintage things I've found or totally creating one just like with c- cool kind of vintage fonts that I've um, sort of been amassing. It's over really this well project. done. I, at first, At first I thought that they were real bumper, like they were all real original bumper stickers that you'd found Good. along the way. Yeah, I really thought Good. that. The photoshopping the, skills are really spot on. Yeah, and you know, yeah, you had a little drop shadow, you had a little creases on it and stuff. There's all sorts of uh, tunes you can play to make it sing, right? But it's all like, yeah, same thing with the um, spray paint T-shirts. I just like design. Like, I think if I wasn't like a writer sort of dude, I'd be kind of a graphic design kind of guy. I really like even anytime I've drawn or animated something, it's been in Adobe Illustrator or um, any of those pro- sort of programs, which are graphic programs. It's not really a, it's, I know the name is like doodling, but it's like vectors where you can build yeah. little things. Um, but yeah, I just got really addicted with um, making funny little yeah. stickers. And I mean, uh, 
the photoshopping skills is like really not what makes the book at all. The, what makes the book is like how hilarious all of these bumper stickers are, which like, oh, yeah. I'm not going to give, I'm not going to spoil this for people, you know, if they want to yeah. get it, they I, can get it. I do want to say, um, it does kind of tell a story. Like I know it's, it's called Horny Fear Hockey. And it's more or less a reinvention of the horny bumper sticker genre, but it's not just that. It's it's kind of a commentary on that entirety, that kind of thinking. And there's a shift halfway through it. And I'm really proud of that. That that kind of most of the book isn't just like, I don't know, spitting and like weird sex stuff that people are obsessed yeah. with nowadays. It it really turn it turns it inward to whoever the narrator is. Maybe it's you, maybe it's me, maybe it's um the maker of these weird bumper stickers. So it does kind of um say something bigger towards the end and has a nice resolution. I'm very proud of that book. I love yeah, it. Yeah, you should be. It's like it turns into yeah, it from like dirty, um, dirty potty mouth bumper stickers. It transitions throughout the book to like asking questions about what it is to be human, and then it goes mm. into then it gives goes into things like forgiveness. Here you go. Mm. Now go away. Um, <laughs> therapy is sick. I'm giving you away too much, but like it's beautiful. Yeah. It really is beautiful, and yeah. it does take you on a story. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Phil There's Murray's, such real feelings too. Sorry, go they ahead. They are. We, are. we are at one hour. That's wow, we all. hit it. We How hit was it. it? It was freaking great. It was like <laughs> all so many things in one. We did it all. Yeah. I should have put the glasses on earlier. I kind of look the cutest I've looked so far. So if for the screen caps, you know, go for okay. the end. All right. All right. So, um, I don't know, do you have a website and, and things? How can people check you out and stalk you? I think probably um, Phil or Philip with one L on Instagram and Twitter. That's kind of the hub to look at everything. I recently built a link tree, which is uh, how I'm guessing you found my T-shirts and various things. Uh, and... Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. Just look me up on those things. It's very simple. I don't really have a good website anymore or anything. And hopefully more things to come. I'm working on everything every single day of my life, making my things for to make my the mom and dad proud. That's it. Yeah. That's the only reason. I don't care about the people. I care about my mommy and daddy, and I want to make them happy. Thank you for that. Okay, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.